Live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here is your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to IBM Insight 2014. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here at the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas. Uh, Alvaro Chavez Torre is here. Uh, he's with Remac Insurance, and to my left is Shankar Ramamurthy, who's with IBM. Uh, he's involved in big data strategy, helping clients really implement big data. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Alvaro, I want to start with Remac. Maybe you could just describe the, the company, um, you know, what you guys are all about. Okay, I will spend a few minutes on this. Remac was founded in 1895. We're 180 company. In older than IBM. Yes, <laughs> older, <laughs> older than IBM. Uh, we're, we're operating in Peru. And uh, to have an idea of the size of the company, uh, by the end of 2014, we will be issuing uh, premiums of around $1.3 billion. Uh, we're also vertically integrated with the uh, healthcare business. We own four hospitals and nine medical centers, and we are part of the Breca Holding. The Breca Holding consists basically in, in participates in, in several businesses, uh, basically in the mining industry, fishing, finance uh, services, insurance services, uh, real estate, and tourism. Uh, just for you to know, the, the, as a whole, the Breca Holding has a direct impact in around 10% of the Peruvian GDP. All right, and Shankar, uh, you are involved in helping clients apply big data analytics processes. Maybe describe your role a little bit, and then we'll get into the REMAC case study. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, um, our, our, our view in IBM is that the combination of big data and analytics, um, along with um, cloud and mobile and social, um, what we call engagement with mobile and social, is fundamentally transforming the global economy. And, and every industry and every enterprise, whether they're operating primarily in the digital world or primarily in the physical world, is being profoundly impacted by this trend. And, and what we've done in IBM is invested tens of billions of dollars in, in helping our clients, by, by creating capability, helping our clients with their transformation journey. I am the global managing partner for the consulting part of that business. Um, what we've done is we've brought together what historically used to be a strategy consulting practice with the um, what we call BAO, business analytics um, and optimization, brought it all together to really focus on the types of issues executives are dealing with increasingly, the power of cloud and analytics and mobile and social is an, an issue that transcends the CIO. It's, it's an issue that's of importance to the CEO, to the chief operations officer, human resource officer, and so on. And what we've done is brought that power of that transformation to bear along with our software capability and helping clients like Remac and others address the industry transformation and take advantage of the power of big data and analytics. So, Alvaro, you hear this story a lot, right? Uh, companies w w uh, understand, or the, the pundits say, the world is being transformed. Many, many com companies do understand, some don't. Mm -hmm. um, you guys came to the realization that something had to change, you had to become more, whatever, whatever buzzword you want to use, data-driven, you know, more analytical. How did it all start? Maybe describe some of the drivers, what types of people in the organization really brought this? Was it a bottoms up? Was it a top down from the boardroom? Can you okay. describe that? Uh, as a leading company in the Peruvian market with more than 30% of the market share for the last 10 years, we were conscious that the insurance industry was evolving in a different way. That is incorporating big data analytics and the, the the process of making decisions is, is being is shortened. And all is tied for, for the purpose of aiming to get exponential results. So for Remac, it was not easy because of the good results that the company has to start envisioning change, transformation, because everybody was comfortable with it. And we started talking with IBM, and we spent 
several weeks at the beginning of 2013 trying to understand each of the processes that we wanted to be transformed. And we attached to that process KPI specifically to capture the benefits of this transformation. Then after, we had to convince not only our board members, but the top management of the company, and as well, the 4,000 employees of, of Remake. It wasn't easy. At the beginning, as I tell, it wasn't easy. But now we have everybody on board, and the results are starting to come one year, I mean, on, on our first year. So it wasn't top down or bottom up, it was kind of middle out, is yes, that right? it was a middle out strategy, that's uh, oh, correct. Oh, okay, and, and the, the driver for that change was what? You saw that, you saw opportunity, you saw risk, you saw the competition, why? Yes, we are not aiming that a global company comes to Peru and then start moving on. What we decided is, as, as is common, your, your loss ratio, in the insurance business, the loss ratio impacts directly in your last, I mean, on the bottom line results. So all these uh, events and processes that are part of this program have a deep uh, impact on our loss ratio, basically. So uh, this will turn Remac uh, a player for a different league in terms of in order any other competition comes, they won't catch up easily because the speed of, 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 of the company will be a lot more than it, it is actually. So loss ratio is, a, I guess, a, what, a, a risk it's, met, it's risk a metric? It's a percentage of the premiums. Right, so you, but, but you have to forecast, right, looking forward to risk of uh, taking on a certain... Yes, I mean, the, the way it was focused, uh, the, the transformation process has to do with our claims, right. with our reinsurance strategy, on the way we uh, analyze data for our new business and our renewals, we are also tackling uh, fraud and leakage in each of the processes in the different risks so that all as a compound impacts our loss ratio. Yeah, so I would think risk, fraud, and marketing and sales would be the three obvious applications for data. Uh, 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 does it include those three? Or yeah, of course, and there's also something very important to mention. Uh, the, the information that we are getting now and the tools that are applied to, to the capturing value out of the information makes us uh, better outcomes in, in most of our decisions in how to take risk and what's the opportunity that we can easy find in our market. So why IBM? Well, IBM in, in, in comparison to other consultants is taking the risk with us, that is, all the benefits that we're going to capture out of this process, it's shared in terms of IBM is being a partner of Remac in, 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 this, in this journey. So the, the decision had to do with they're all not only robust in, in, the, uh, in the way they, they uh, approach the market in terms of the consultancy that they bring to the table, but also the tools that they're implementing can help us widely uh, and, 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 and after all, better than any other consultant firm. Okay, so Shankar, uh, someone like Alvaro comes to you, let's take this specific case, and says, okay, we have a, a problem, an opportunity, we want your help, where do you start? So, so typically what we tend to do is try and come up with a proof of concept. In other words, you know, we are so comfortable with the power of big data and analytics and our ability to, to apply models to business problems to unlock economic value that we try and prove within a relatively short period of time that we can unlock a lot of economic value. So, so rather than try and, and do a large engagement, we would say, let's take a part of your problem and let's prove to you the economic value. And when What's you, a short period of time? Could be six weeks, it, okay. it depends on, so, you know. Yeah, that's short. Right. It is short. Right, if you get an answer in six weeks, you got my attention, right? Right, so in, in a short period of time, demonstrate that there is value to be unlocked. Now the actual transformation program, like Alvaro was saying, is a long journey, right? But, but if you know that you can unlock economic value, and then you take the monies unlocked, whether it be in claims or underwriting or fraud, you know, um, risk management, um, and then apply the monies unlocked to the actual transformation journey, which is a which has got lots of pieces to it. There's a change management, there is a technology piece, there's a 
process through engineering, there is the way you communicate with the external world and the multiple stakeholders. A number of things to be done in the actual journey. But if you can unlock the economic value based on big data and analytics, it then makes that journey easier because it becomes a self-funded program. And, and in VR, like Alvaro was suggesting, very comfortable with the economic value we can unlock, so we are willing to put skin in the game and work with our clients in partnership to create the economic value. Alvaro, you mentioned KPIs, you mentioned one loss ratio. You have to be careful, I would imagine, not have I'll try to optimize every KPI under the mm -hmm. sun, there are some knobs that you can turn to optimize your business. So, what are we talking about? Are we talking about a handful of KPIs, dozens, hundreds, <laughs> thousands? What? No, Give no, us a sense of the scope. It's very simple. Each of the processes that are being transformed has a specific KPI. For, for example, in, in terms of fraud and leakage, out of all the claims that we process, for example, in health, there are around 200,000 transactions a month. And out of that, we're capturing a specific KPI on each of the type of, of claims that we pay. In terms of, well, now we're doing things in a linear way and only analyzing partially, proportionally, a, 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 a piece of all those transactions. But now, we're applying this technology to the whole process. So those two, 200,000 transactions a month are being analyzed, deeply analyzed, and we're capturing any possible fraud activity on those transactions. Are you trying to optimize pricing or whether or not to take a deal? No, as long as we capture value in our loss ratio, we can price better and may be more competitive. Right, okay, so it's, a, so, so it's all about uh, pricing to get the deal if it's profitable. Of course. Or pricing you know, appropriately where you've got a, 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 a loss ratio that's too high. And we're, and we're at some point, we will be able to transfer this benefit to our customers. Mm. It's going to be transparent. So, so, okay, so you start with the proof of concept. Where, where do you start? Do you start with the business process, the application portfolio, some combination? So it, it depends, right? So, so one, of the, one of the very clear things that's happening is every line of business executive is increasingly um, open to actually leveraging the power of big data and analytics. So it could be, I'll give you an example, it could be the CHRO, you know, the Chief Human Resource Officer. It could be the CFO, it could be the Chief Risk Officer, it could be the Chief Operations Officer, it could be, you know, any, any CXO um, might be interested in leveraging, you know, Chief Marketing Officer, the Chief Sales Officer, you know. Any part of the business might be in uh, a logical place in which um, you, know, you interact with the business executive to unlock economic value. Turns out, increasingly, the CIO who used to be the chief data officer, the CIO who used to be the primary uh, person involved in technology, is now becoming an advocate and a partner with the line of business executives in unlocking economic value. So the way we have structured ourselves in our consulting practice, we've got about 20,000 people in the strategy analytics consulting practice worldwide. The way we've organized ourselves is by what we call domain, meaning the, the, the various CXOs, and by industry. So, you know, in the case of Remac, as an example, you know, we bring people who understand the insurance industry along with people who understand technology deeply and specific domains. So you bring that combination together along with the power of IBM software and IBM research and Watson, we are able to do extraordinary things for our clients. Okay, so it's role-based and industry-based. Obviously the industry here is, is, is insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, where did you start from, uh, from a domain? So you know, it, it, again, it depends on it, it depends on the in, client. In, 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 in the case of the Remac, the domain is all around operations and underwriting and risk, right? That's that's where the material opportunities, you know, exist. That you know, and you look at the processes in those areas, you unlock a lot of economic value and, and put in place a transformation journey. Okay, so it's underwriting and risk, trying to understand. So so, but starting with the uh, underwriting risk, but looking at the claims data. Right, so you can then go back to the systems around, uh, in the business processes around underwriting and risk. Now those business processes are pretty hardened. You've got, <laughs> I don't know how many decades of business process layered, built up, and you've got technology systems supporting that. That's that are also very hardened, and they work. 
Of course. Right, so did you get a lot of friction in terms well, of before moving this? into this process, we spent five years optimizing our legacy and core systems in the company. Modernizing those Yes, systems. modernizing for five years. And after that, we decided that it was about time to capture the benefit out of those efforts. That's why we moved, we moved into the transformation with IBM. Okay, so um, that modernization was what? A, an application portfolio rationalization, re looking at business process? Basically, basically, what we changed was the structure of the databases for all, I mean, we integrated the customer's view yeah. and all the risks involved with our customers. I mean, now Remac is considered a customer-centric company. So you had a product view before, potentially, something That's like correct. that. And the customer would call for one product, you go, I don't know. And it, and it, very frustrating for the customers we all have, because that, consumers can understand that's that. That's correct. So you fix that problem. So, okay, so now you got a better view of the customer, but you weren't optimizing on underwriting and risk, yes. in your view. We didn't have the tools and the technology to, to, to have a better usage of our information. So you weren't worried that it would necessitate a change in your in your underlying technology infrastructure, or maybe it did, I, I don't know. Or were you, are you building on top of that? Are you having to, because you've just modernized your, your, your application portfolio and your technology infrastructure. Are you worried they have to throw that out and, and start no, over no, again? No, not at all. Or why were you confident that you wouldn't have to do that? Because we, I mean, the way our uh, IT architecture is built is based on uh, AII standard. Yeah, okay. So everybody's doing that. So there was no means of, of, of uh, potential errors. And as I mentioned, we decided to build things on top of those new legacies. Do you, um, as part of this, did, do, do you have a chief data officer? Of course, we have one. Yeah, it's interesting you say, of course, many companies don't. Of course, insurance, <coughs> more likely to have one. So when did that CDO role emerge? We're, well, it, it, it emerged a couple of years ago. And all this data governance process that we run during the last two years was very important for that purpose as well. Right, and, and uh, I, I wonder if we could, <laughs> can we generalize by industry or maybe just in general? Um, taking the, the, the industries that are more, most likely to have a CDO, CDO um, say finance, insurance, uh, healthcare maybe, government, what percent of the clients that you talk to have a, a chief data, data officer. officer well, well, um, the title might might slightly vary, but data czar. Right. Yeah. Know, so, so in, in, in in financial services, pretty much, you know, every large enterprise has increasingly got a chief data officer uh, because, in some instances, the regulators are mandating it as well. Right. So, so, so close to 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, it's increasingly becoming yeah. the norm. Certainly. Right. Yeah, in the, in the mature markets, it's pretty much the norm. I mean, yep. there are other parts of the world where it's, you know, where it's still evolving. And they might not be called the chief data officer, but, but there's someone responsible. It's somebody who's responsible yeah. for governance, data architecture, data quality. But over time, that role becomes much broader, right? That person ends up becoming the advocate for bringing the power of big data and analytics to bear on enterprise information, and not just enterprise information, combine that enterprise information, the structured data, with a whole bunch of unstructured data that's outside the enterprise, right? So whether it be information from social media, public domain, bring all that together to unlock the economic value, and, and that becomes a virtuous cycle. So you know, any industry that's primarily dealing with bits, so you know, healthcare, there's a lot of information, financial services, uh, telecommunications industry. I mean, there's a whole bunch of industries that are primarily dealing with, with information. Information is a real asset. Those industries have got the equivalent of a chief data officer increasingly, mm -hmm. and they recognize information as, as a genuine competitive weapon. That's not to say that industries that operate in the physical world don't. Yeah, oil and gas, I mean, they're increasingly yeah. data they're, they're massively, data yeah. They're massively data right. oriented. But, but right? you're right, I mean, the, the atom businesses, are, are there's less pressure than the They, they have the a bit more time, they have the yeah. luxury of time, but it's catching up with them as well. And this individual reports to whom? The CDO, is it the? To the uh, chief operating officer? Yeah, not the, not the CIO. So the CIO, and the CDO report into the, the in, in COO. In our case, the COO and the CIO are, are the same. They're person. one and the same. Oh, yes. really? Oh, yes. interesting. That's that's fascinating. I've had a lot of 
CIOs tell me that their role is morphing in, and they're having to choose. Do I become a chief data officer, a chief operating officer, or a, a chief technical officer? You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Um, it was the, the modernization project was a prerequisite to this, I of presume. Of course, it was. Any it was. other sort of things that people should think about? Change management, basically. As I mentioned this morning, it wasn't easy to move all the company because of the of their results. I mean, nobody was envisioning, why, why, why do we have to change? So, uh, uh, the first thing we, we have done was thoroughly analyze the process, place the KPIs where you have to be, but secondly and more important, communication. We communicated everybody in the company, why do we need to change? Why is change important? And what's the outcome of change? Because people get scared, you know. Every time you change your applications, every time you do new, new things in, 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 your, in your square meter of, of, of work, uh, people start thinking, what's, what's going to come next? Is, it, is there a benefit for me? Where is it? So those answers to those questions were specifically uh, delivered by our CEO to all the employees in the company. So, Shankar, the, the, the proof of concept was, was, if I understand it correctly, a, essentially a business case around a high value area where you can unlock economic value was essentially what you described. So, how'd you do that? Did you sample data? Did you take your benchmarks from other yeah, you know, so, like companies? Yeah, so it's a, it's a combination of things, right? So, so it, it turns out that there are a lot of repeatable patterns you know, you know, within industries um, and, and across geographies there are certain repeatable patterns that we come up with multiple times. It's, it's based on the, the tens of thousands of projects that we do around the world. And, and there are some, you know, for example, if, if with Remac, um, you know, claims is an opportunity, turns out that in many insurance companies, by, by applying very sophisticated analytical techniques, you can actually unlock value in claims. You know, or if, if you're a CHRO, there are opportunities by, by applying analytics to the talent, to the people dimension, you can unlock economic value. I'll give you some examples, right? So we did this piece of work for this theater chain, um, and, you know, to understand what the value drivers were and how to unlock economic value. It turns out that 100% of the, of the profitability for this theater chain came uh, not from selling movie tickets, but from selling popcorn and confectionery, right? Because, of course, right? <laughs> right. But you had the data to prove it. Now, yeah. and, <laughs> and I got four kids, so I know that. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the movie ticket pays for the, you know, the infrastructure <laughs> yeah, right. and, and keeps the lights on and so on. But the profitability comes from the confectionery and the popcorn. Right. Turns out that the profitability of a particular theater was directly dependent on the turnover yeah, of the sure. employees in that store, mm. right? Wow. Now, once the, the, the enterprise understood the insight, they were able to put in place, you know, they had 300% turnover a year in their, in their confectionery and popcorn store, right? If you can reduce that turnover, so when you compare the best theaters with the rest, the empirical data was stock, so they put in place mechanisms to reduce turnover, right? Better job environment, benefits. Benefits, promotion up the opportunities. salary a little bit. Exactly. Right significant impact on, on, on profitability. So in many, so you think about that pattern, right? So now we are able to take that pattern and apply it to multiple retail industries where employee turnover is high. Mm. So we can go with confidence and say, you know right. what, give us your data, we're going to prove to you that there's economic value. Now, doing that alone is not enough, but that unlocks the economic value that we can then take in the case of Remac, they had already done the transformation of the technology portfolio and modernization. In some other clients, we need to unlock the economic value to help them modernize. So we're out of time, but I wanted to just get a sense of the, the timing of the projects. W when did this start and what's the time frame look like? Uh, I'm intrigued by the whole self-funding mechanism. That sounds like it's critical. But uh, Yes, it, this started this year, 2014, and it will last for five years. And every, at the end of each year, we're going to renew our vows and, and check yeah, on the KPIs yeah, yeah. for all of the processes that are going to be transformed. And the intent is to make it self-funding. Of course. Uh, and, and, and then the, the profit that you make goes back into 
where? Bottom line, organization, is there a gain sharing? How's that yes, work? Yes, there is a bottom line and a gain share between us. Awesome. Great, well gentlemen, thanks very much for coming Thank to theCUBE and sharing you your story, really appreciate it. Cheers. All right, keep it right there everybody. We'll be back to wrap day one from IBM Insight. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back.